Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Alexander Howell, and today we are going to try to run through 30 tips for you if you happen to be visiting Medi de Mexico. These are tips that I have learned through my trips there and tips that I will hopefully learn even more about when we move into our home in Medi de Mexico, whether we're snowbirds, whether we're there in retirement, or we're there full time. So uh, let's get to it. 30 tips. We're going to run through this quick. I'm thinking 10 minutes. What do you think? Let's see if I can be 10 minutes. Let's roll the intro. Okay, and before we start this video, I just want to let you guys know that you might have noticed that there is a join tab on my YouTube channel. And basically what that allows for you to do is if you want to join, it's a membership based thing. I'm going to try to add more and more features to it as we grow the community on here. But it might be early exclusive access to different videos. It might be members only chats, things of this nature. And the reason that I'm launching these videos is because I would really like to make sure that every single time that I have one of these videos there, the quality gets better and better and better and better. And that's part of the way that it can. So you might have noticed that there's some ads on the channel at this point that's helping me in the exact same way. So never, ever, ever feel like this is something that I'm trying to push. That was that's not my thing. That's not my cup of tea. But if you do feel like that, fantastic. If not, just keep watching the videos. That is obviously the best praise that I can have. It's just trying to kind of build this into something where as much information can come to you as possible. That's where I am. Information is the key. And when I say I want to be an asset as opposed to a liability, I try to make sure that I answer every single one of your text messages at 727-7740, that I answer all the messages that I got on Instagram, email, and the like. At the comment section down below, I try to respond to every single one. The reason that I try to do that is because I absolutely love the fact that I just get to do this and interact with all of you. It has been fantastic. It literally puts a smile on my face every day. So again, if this is not not something you want to do, do not worry about it. If it is, much appreciated. And also, you're helping me no matter what. If you're watching the video, if you're commenting, liking, subscribing, whatever it might be, if you're clicking the affiliate links down below, all of those things help this channel. So don't feel like there's any pressure at all. This is a place where I want to create a community of people who really appreciate that we're all different humans and we're trying to figure out what we want to do with what we have. And that as we move forward, we make it fantastic. So if that's you, like, subscribe, enjoy the channel. Let's get to the video. The heavy stuff's over with now. All right, so let's start it out. 50 trips when traveling to Madrid, Mexico. So the hottest season is centered around May. So you're going to want to choose your trip wisely. If you think this is a place that you're going to want to be all the time for the entire year, then you might want to say, I'm going to go in May. I'm going to get myself in the part of the year that is the absolute most stifling, the hottest part of the year. Get down there, figure out if I can handle it, and then everything else is going to seem like a breeze. So the airport is downtown and it is very small. Now, that means a couple of things. It's easy to get in and out, but at the same time, when you're talking about getting through customs, it can take quite a long time. So if you choose like American Airlines, which normally lands there mid afternoon, that might be better if you have small kids. We've taken United with kids and it's late at night and it takes quite a while. So just make sure that you understand it's a small airport. It takes a while to get through customs, but depending on the airline that you choose, you might get through it faster. Plaza Grande is a place that you're going to hear a lot about. That's where the colorful Merida sign is. That's the oldest part of Merida, Mexico. And there's a whole history that I've done in the past about this, but it is a little touristy. So just be prepared to be kind of accosted by a couple of people asking you to buy one thing or another, but you're never going to regret it. Plaza Grande has to be number one in your list. So when you talk about Merida, the actual city, like the city proper, if you will, the historic center is the very central district, but you'll also hear a lot of people talk about Norte or North. That is a much more modern area area. So you're going to see modern houses, condos, townhouses. You'll also see malls. You'll see more modern restaurants. North, think about it as the more modern area. Central district, that's the historic center of Merida. So one thing that I get asked a lot is, why do you talk about the beach when you're talking about Merida? And I'll get to that later. But Merida is, without question, a colonial town. It is about 20 minutes from the beach. So when somebody says they're going to go to the beach and hang out in Merida, two very different things. There are beach towns near it, but Merida itself is a colonial town. So Progreso is the main beach town, but there are several beach towns. Telchac Puerto, Chilem, Chuberna, all kinds. Chicxulub, which is where the asteroid hit that killed all the dinosaurs. All of those are beach towns in Yucatan tan on the beach and they're absolutely beautiful and each one has its own little feel to it but progresso is the main one and again it is about 20 minutes north of medida proper so if somebody says they're going to medida for the beach nope they're going to progresso or one of the other beach towns so as i've advertised medida mexico and the areas in yucatan one thing that kind of comes up every once in a while is is this like cancun is this like part of iota where everybody speaks english there are many bilingual people there there are many people that only speak english but the fact of the matter is this is definitely not the most touristy place in the world so you're 
you're going to want to understand that if you go there, it is not a solely English speaking place like a Cancun is, which is three and a half hours east. You will have to know a little bit of Spanish and you should. You're visiting their country. So in order to help you with that, number eight is going to be download the Google Translate app. It is absolutely wonderful and a must have for travelers in general, the ability to speak into your phone, give it to somebody else. They speak into your phone and you to actually have a conversation on your phone, no matter the language, as long as it's on the app is wonderful. Google Translate, download it today. So when you're thinking about transportation, whether it's from the airport to your Airbnb or hotel or your hotel to your restaurant, understand that Uber is a thing. They do have Uber down there and it is incredibly cheap. Make sure you download the Uber app, get down there. It will take you anywhere. I would say that don't go to some of the more remote places because they can't really get back. But if you're talking about anywhere within Medita proper or you're in a beach town like Progresso and you're trying to get from one place to another, Uber app works very cheap, good to go. So another reason to use that Uber app or whatever you want to use is drinking and driving is not just bad down there like it is in the United States. It is heavily, heavily, heavily enforced. When we were down there, there were several checkpoints. There were a lot of people that got pulled over. One person in our group had had a half a drink at a restaurant and they got pulled over and were freaked out because they were seeing people be led into the paddy wagon one by one. They didn't have to, but it scared them out of driving the rest of the time. So one thing I will say is without question, don't drink and drive as always, but use Uber. It's cheap and it's going to save you a night in jail. So if you're looking to rent a car like we did originally, we were staying in kind of a nowhere area beach town. We needed to get back and forth to grocery stores and stuff like that. So we needed to rent a car. We couldn't just use Uber the entire time. When you are looking at rental cars, make sure you research it because what you'll find is you'll find a really cheap rental car, like a daily rate, but there's a specific type of insurance that you need down there that's going to kick you in the pants if you don't recognize what it is because it's going to become so much more expensive to rent a car. If you need a suggestion, comment down below. I will suggest somebody to you that will take care of you. And that's not me making money off of the person. They just took care of us. I want to take care of them, but make sure you rent a car, right? Okay. So if you're like us, you want to Airbnb a place, especially if you have friends and family coming down, a hotel room is only going to be so big. So the, there are four main requirements that I always put into the Airbnb filters. And those are these air conditioning, because it's hot. Like we were just talking about in May, it gets really hot. Central location. You want to be around as many places as possible. Now, if you're staying in an area where you know people, that's one thing. But if you're looking to enjoy the full entertainment of Merida, make sure that you're in a central location. I personally suggest around San Parque de Santa Lucia. Next thing, Wi-Fi. They have good Wi-Fi there. The closer you get to the beach, it's a little wonky, but Wi-Fi within the city is great. And of course, pool is a must. It is hot as can be down there. Where is the best place to stay if you're not staying in an Airbnb? The Hyatt Regency Hotel, El Paracito Secreto. Don't at me. <laughs> All right, number 14, Parque de Santa Lucia. That is going to be the best park for restaurants. Everything is there. You're going to have some amazing establishments. Walk the park. Enjoy it. Find other wonderful places. But if you're looking for the best park for restaurants, Parque de Santa Lucia, again, don't at me. Guys, there are some wonderful day trips in Yucatan, and I suggest that you try to visit as many as you possibly can. The top three that I can think of aren't necessarily the individual place, but go to Cenotes. Those are these beautiful in-ground lakes that were formed when the asteroid hit the dinosaurs. Also, make sure that you go to Progresso Beach in the areas just north of there. There's some beautiful, wonderful beaches with some fantastic restaurants and kind of off the beaten path areas. And then, of course, the Mayan ruins, the most famous of which is Chichen Itza, but there are several around there. Take a day trip. You will not regret any of them. So this is just a simple suggestion that I've heard from several forums and everything else and something that we've used as well. If you need a place where you're kind of going off the beaten path a bit, hire a driver, but anywhere else you can Uber in between. So if you're taking a trip to a cenote, hire a driver. If you're taking a trip to one of the ruins, hire a driver. If you're going from central to North Merida, hire an Uber. It's cheap as can be. Okay, if you're staying in Progresso or one of the beach towns surrounding it, I'm going to give you the place that you need to go to for grocery stores or other shopping. Grocery stores, the Soriana, right when you get into Progresso from Merida. So you're taking the, that highway straight north. Boom, you're right there. Drive a block north. Go to the Soriana grocery store. It's going to have everything that you could possibly want. If you need anything more than groceries, go directly across the street to Bodega Diana. They have everything else that you will possibly need. And the traffic there is nothing compared to if you try to go to Central Progresso. All right, so if you're looking for a meal that you're used to, and let's say you're from the United States or Canada and you want to go get some great pizza and you're in the Progresso area, go to a place called Crocodiles. Yep, Crocodiles. It's in between Progresso and Chicxulub, but I believe it is technically in Progresso. Go to Crocodiles. Amazing pizza, fantastic cold beer. This is not sponsored. They're awesome. 
All right, so you're needing an amazing breakfast and you're near Progresso. The first thing I'm going to suggest, because we ate there, I think, five or six times, is La Antigua. A little bit more formal, but absolutely amazing. The second place I'll recommend is not formal at all, but it's called Restaurant David's or Restaurant David's. I honestly can't remember how to pronounce it. Fantastic food, great people at both places. La Antigua, Restaurant David's. Okay, so as you're navigating across the area, what you're probably going to see is things called calles, C-A-L-L-E. So a calle is a street, and what you're going to need to realize is that those streets are numbered. Now, now, if the street is running north to south, it's going to be an even number. If it's running east to west, it's going to be an odd number. It is an extremely efficient grid pattern that you're going to want to learn to get yourself anywhere within the area. So if you're in Merida, just remember north, south, even, east, west, odd, you'll find your way around easy. Okay, you're going to hear things, whether you're on a forum or not, called gringo prices. Gringo prices are prices for people from the US, UK, Canada, all that kind of stuff. And they are 100% real gringo prices. You will pay extra because you, you are a gringo. So the first thing that you should probably do outside of Plaza Grande is make sure that you take a nice little walking tour on the Paseo de Mateo. It is the main thoroughfare from close to the northernmost part of Medita proper, getting close into the central district. This is where there are mansions. Uh, some are still mansions that are occupied occupied by people. Some have become banks and shops and that kind of thing. Paseo de Mateo is the number one thoroughfare in the city. It is absolutely the place that once you hit Plaza Grande, walk a little bit north, Paseo de Mateo. All right, I talked about this just a little bit ago, but the internet is better within the city than it is on the beach. On the beach, they have, everybody calls it gringo internet, but it is what it is. It's just basically cellular internet signals between towers. Within the city, and you will notice this on every block, there are tons of wires. Obviously, some are electricity, some are cable, some are internet. By and large, the internet within editor proper is far better than it is on the beaches. We didn't have problems either way, but just good to know. Okay, so we should be on number 24 at this point, and this one's easy. Wear sunscreen for the love of God. I was out in an hour and a half. I got heat rash, and I couldn't be outside for like two and a half days. Wear sunscreen. Make it higher SPF than what you normally wear. Okay, we actually learned this one. This is number 25. We actually learned this one on a day where we were carrying our kids up and down the block because they got so worn out that we had to carry them, and it was for like 12 blocks, which doesn't seem like much but a little crazy aim for the shaded side of the street i'm not kidding you when we switched to the shaded side of the street which took us about a block to figure out it went from 100 to 85 doesn't sound too crazy but when you're carrying kids it is shaded side of the street concentrate on it all right this has so much more to do with you planning your trip than anything else because the sidewalks in Madida are tiny they have some signs that show handicapped accessible i can tell you one thing crystal clear i can be very honest with you about this they can get you onto the sidewalk. You're not going any further than that. So if you need additional assistance, plan on it because they have very skinny sidewalks with poles in the middle of them. You're not going to get very far on it. So if you need accessibility, make sure you plan ahead. So if you are driving, if you choose to drive a car, so there are a lot of busy roads within Merida and you will see pedestrian crossings that kind of look like giant speed bumps, like sidewalks that they made speed bumps. Always, always stop at that if you see a pedestrian. This is not a pedestrians have to figure out whether or not you're going. They're going to start walking and you have to stop and if you don't you're going to get fined they take it very seriously so if you see somebody crossing the road don't think it's their time to stop it's yours okay so remember the kaye system that i was talking about with the even numbers and odd numbers if you look at the map you're going to see a lot of really efficient ways to get somewhere but it takes forever to cross those roads even with those pedestrian walkthroughs what i would suggest to you get used to the kaye system and understand that if you walk a block over it's going to save you 10 minutes of time to walk on a street that nobody travels on to the walk on the main road. 29 is real, and I've talked about this before, but bugs are a thing. They grow bigger and badder down there. Don't even ask me. Don't talk to me about it. They're slightly terrifying. You get used to it, but at the same time, word to the wise, check your covers. That way you can sleep at night. All right, number 30, the last one that we're going to talk about today. Keep in mind, Merida is the second safest city in North America, but you still need to be safe. If you're walking alone at night, try to make sure that you're always looking around you. Even if you're with a group, try to make sure that you're not too drunk or anything like that. I'm not trying to victim blame or any way, shape, or form. I just want you to be all about your wits without question. Keep yourself safe, just like I tell you anywhere else in the world. So there we go. Did we make it? How many? How many? I looked over there like I had somebody waiting over there. Let's see if we made it in 10 minutes or not. I'm not sure. 
All right, so that was a bunch of tips in 10 minutes. I hope we made it under the timeline, but my name is Alexander Howe. Please feel free to like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the little notification bell if you enjoy the content. That'll let you know anytime that I stream live or one of these videos goes live as well. Also, feel free to visit me at these social media links. Text me at 816-727-7740. That's the thing that comes the fastest to me. But also feel free to visit me at Alexander from KC on all those social media links. Instagram is kind of my thing at Alexander from KC, but follow me on the rest and I'll, I'll be there as well. Also, feel free to visit my website, alexanderhowell.com, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R-H-O-W-E-L-L.com. And if you hit the Contact Us button, all that does is sends me an email directly to me. And if you are on Facebook and you want to join a wonderful community of people, go to Travel to Medida, just type that in, or go to facebook.com slash group slash travel, the number two Medida. And we started a Facebook group that I think is coming up on 50 people at this point. So it's growing really, really quickly, and it's got some amazing people in there that are going to be happy to send you as much information as possible if you have any questions about Medida. No cattiness, no politics, just questions. And guys, if you do want to become a little bit more than a subscriber to the channel, understand that I just was able to kind of set up some membership tiers and stuff like that. So check that out. If you go to the original page, so if you click on my on my face on, the, on this uh, on this video, there's actually a button that's called join, and that'll give you the option to join as a member of the channel. And all that really does is helps me to kind of create better content. And um, you'll see some, you know, community posts and stuff like that. Nothing too crazy right now, but that'll uh, allow you to kind of be a little bit more engaged with the channel, anything new that's coming out. And what I'm going to try to do is when what these videos go live, give you a couple of days notice so that you can watch the video first, see what you think about it, let me know. I'm going to try to set things up to where as the channel grows, there's more and more and more benefit to it. But if you'd like to do that, just go back to the main channel, hit join, pick a tier. It is not required. If you don't want to do that, not a big deal at all. It's just one of those things that if you know, you want to appreciate it, if not all good, the channel's the channel. So all that awkwardness aside, my name is Alexander Howell. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, peace.